What's up guys, Eric here, bringing you a deep dive today on Zscaler. Now this is a zero trust cybersecurity stock. I had the community, I had the Discord community vote on which stock they wanted me to do a deep dive on and this one got the highest votes. You're gonna learn a lot about Zscaler on here, not only about what the company does, I promise you, I'm gonna make this as simple as I possibly can to help you understand more about the company. And we're also gonna go deep dive into some of the financials and fundamentals and just the, the numbers and metrics. I'm gonna give you the pros and I'm gonna give you the cons. You're gonna to wanna to see this one, guys. Stay tuned. So in a minute here, guys, I'm gonna actually show you a video. I'm gonna break down a video that's from Zscaler's website that I think simplifies the company. And I, I encourage you to watch that full, I think three minutes. But really, so they're talking about transforming today and tomorrow. Leveraging the largest security cloud on the planet, Zscaler anticipates, secures, and simplifies the experience of doing business for the world's most established companies. We're gonna talk more about zero trust and exactly what that means. Experience secure digital transformation. So this is that buzzword you hear over and over, digital transformation. We accelerate digital transformation to our customers to be more agile, efficient, resilient, and secure. Our cloud native zero trust exchange, that's the first time you hear it, you're gonna hear it several times in this video. That platform protects thousands of customers from cyber attacks and data loss by securely connecting users, devices, and applications in any location. Now that sounds simple enough, but I wanna show you some, some graphics with that and explain it in a little bit more detail. I wanna cover this last part before I go into that. So 5,600 customers with 25% of the Forbes Global 2000 list, 200 plus billion daily transactions secured. Think about that number. Over 200 billion daily transactions secured. 76, that's the net promoter score. SaaS company equals 30 on average. And Gartner, it's a leader in the Gartner MQ for security service edge. You think of the web gateway, web gateway portal. We've achieved incredible growth since our founding in 2007. So they've been around for a while. And today we exist to create a world in which an exchange of information is always secure and seamless. It's our mission to anticipate, secure, and simplify the experience of doing business, transforming today and tomorrow. Let me break down what this company does as simply as I possibly can and show you some graphics. So businesses want to keep data safe and they want to keep their users happy. Now in the past, we used more of a hub and spoke architecture and your data center was really the center of gravity. All traffic flowed there. So you think of on-premises. As internet traffic increased, businesses created outbound gateways to protect their network. So you can see in the yellow on the outside, that's the internet gateway, that's an outbound gateway. Now more appliances were needed then to keep your network safe. And these cost a lot of money. So businesses are spending more and more money on appliances, and honestly, it makes the user experience quite terrible. And in a cloud environment, this no longer works. So when you think of the modern day business, especially people working from home, remote work, people are very flexible. Sometimes they work in the office, sometimes they don't. Everything's moving to the cloud. Applications have moved to the cloud and more of your users are mobile. So the internet is now the new corporate network. 
and the cloud is the new center of gravity, no longer that hub and spoke on-premises architecture. And Zscaler was built in the cloud for the cloud. And it's really a security stack as a service. So a security stack as a service, and they call it the Zscaler internet access that takes everything that you see on your screen essentially and it protects it all. It was purpose built in the cloud for the cloud and you get identical protection anywhere. So it keeps your data safe anywhere. So if you say, for example, you've got people that travel all over the world, your executives, your salespeople, no matter where they go, that data is gonna be safe. There's over 150 Zscaler data centers spread out across the globe and your data is going to be safe and your connections are gonna be lightning fast no matter where you go, wherever your users go. This is safer than appliances. It's going to lower the cost and complexity of that old on-premise technology that we used to use. And really what you do is you point all your traffic to Zscaler and Zscaler takes care of the rest. And this is really built for the modern work environment. It's gonna lower cost, lower complexity, increase performance and make your users happy. So you think of Internet of Things, mobile, you think of HQ branch, all your information flowing in and out of Zscaler. Zscaler is an internet gateway, again, built in the cloud for the cloud. And this is an awesome product with over 200 patents. Okay, so you just watched that and now you know what Zscaler does, but to recap, okay, provides technology and expertise to guide and secure organizations on their digital transformation journeys. We help them move away from appliance-based networks that we just talked about and security infrastructure models, replacing traditional inbound and outbound gateways with modern cloud-delivered services built for today's business. Ultimately, we enable our customers to securely take advantage of the agility intelligence and scalability of the cloud. They were founded in 2007. They've got 5,000 employees. They went public in March of 2018, ticker is ZS under the NASDAQ. They're headquartered in California and awards. They've got a bunch of different awards you can see here. I'm not gonna read through all those. How many customers? We talked a little bit about that before, but 5,600 customers around the world. Industries, you can see here, they cover a lot of them. Does Zscaler have a partner program? Yes, and they partner with some of my other favorite companies in the cybersecurity space. I might do another video to follow up on this. Um, how much traffic does the Zscaler, we talked about this, right? 200 billion transactions per day at peak periods. Is Zscaler technology patented? Over 200 patents, and I read, I'll show you in a, in a couple minutes here, we're gonna look at an actual slide deck, and it says their 300th patent has this been filed. So 300 patents, that's quite a few, right? What is the Zscaler Zero Trust Exchange? We're gonna talk more about that later. What is Zscaler Internet Access? We kind of talked about that and so on. Let's dive a little bit deeper here. I wanna talk more about Zero Trust and what that means. So what is Zero Trust? I promise you, if you haven't heard Zero Trust, you're gonna hear it over and over again now that I've brought it to your attention. Zero Trust is a framework for securing organizations in the cloud and mobile world that basically takes and says, hey, we don't trust anybody, that no application should be trusted by default. Following a key zero trust principle, least privilege access trust is an established based on context, such as user identity, location, and security posture of the endpoint, the app of the service being requested with policy checks at each step. So zero trust definition, guys. Zero trust is a cybersecurity strategy wherein security policy is applied based on context established through least privileged access controls and strict user authentication not assumed trust. A well-tuned zero trust architecture leads to simpler network infrastructure, a better user experience and improved cyber threat defense. So why are companies moving to a trust, the zero trust model of cybersecurity? This is an article a couple months old here, but zero trust model of security takes the approach that no users or devices are to be trusted. The global zero trust security market is projected to reach $52 billion by 2026 driving the growth and the frequency of target-based cyber attacks and increasing regulations for data protection, information security. This is what the government basically installs and said, hey, we want zero trust. And they're encouraging more and more corporations to do the same. The US federal government is making a big push towards zero trust. In January, the Office of Management and Budget released a memorandum that mandates a federal zero trust architecture or ZTA strategy 
requiring agencies to meet specific cybersecurity standards and objectives by the end of fiscal 2024. And the government has been encouraging more and more private institutions and corporations to adopt similar policies. And here's even a recent article from Forbes, why businesses should follow government in adopting zero trust cybersecurity strategies. This is from the Office of Management and Budget, OMB. And I won't read the whole thing, but the White House Zero Trust Architecture Strategy Detail Roadmap with important requirements for encryption, multi-factor authentication, strong identity management, networks segmentation, and continuous dynamic policy enforcement is a step forward. He noted that cyber attacks are more frequent and damaging than ever before, and traditional perimeter-based security models are no match for them. Okay, so Zscaler is going to be one of those modern zero trust architectures that's going to help, that's going to support this cause, right? With the proliferation of digital technologies and the shift to cloud computing and remote workforce, this is, this is explaining what Zscaler does. And this is not talking about Zscaler, but Zscaler nails this on the head. It's imperative that organizations in both private and public sectors shift to a zero trust mindset centered on trusted identity and perimeter-based security. Doing so will help the US government from many future cyber attacks because users and devices can only access resources they are authorized to see. This is great stuff. Other cybersecurity experts weighed in on those the private sector should implement their own zero trust strategies. Okay, so this is talking about corporations, right? If they have not done so already. Now, some of the biggest companies in the world obviously have, and most of them have, but there's still a lot of work that can be done, especially when you think of SMB as well. If they have not done it, so the failures to implement such strategies could create cyber-related crisis situations for companies and organizations, and companies are just as vulnerable as the government and so on. There's a lot of hoopla, a lot of buzz around this. And Zscaler is one of those companies that could be a huge benefactor from you know, additional cybersecurity and zero trust. This is a fresh deck just from June, 2022. Hot off the presses here. So Zscaler highlights from their recent, they just had earnings a couple weeks ago. You can see total revenue is trending up. Everything's trending in the right direction for the most part. We'll talk more about the numbers here in a few minutes. But Pioneer and Leader in Cloud Security, founded in 2007, $72 billion in serviceable, serviceable market opportunities. So they think that their TAM is $72 billion. We'll talk about market cap and other, other uh, items and financials here in a second. So stay tuned. Long-term secular tailwinds, you know, cloud shift, mobility, Internet of Things, rising threats. We talked about some of these already. Sustainable competitive advantage. So they have first mover at massive scale, delivering measurable customer value, and they're doing good things. They've been around for a while. This company is going to continue to do well, but it is expensive still. We're going to talk about some of those valuations here. Attractive financial profile. So this is big. $1 billion in recurring revenue. That's a big number. 125% for the dollar-based retention, that retention rate. Experienced founder-led team, which is important. You can also see the growth in the 100K plus ARR or annual recurring revenue customers. They call themselves the leader in secure digital transformation. And I think this paints a really good picture here, guys. It shows you that zero trust exchange in the middle and everything around it we've kind of already covered. That $1 billion in annual recurring revenue, 63% growth year over year, although it could be slowing down from this point a little bit. We'll talk about that. 4,500 employees, 11 consecutive years of Gartner leadership, largest security cloud. So 240 billion. Now this is even higher than what we saw earlier. We saw 200 billion. 240 billion, this is 20X Google searches. And you can see market leader across vertical. So they have 40% of Fortune 500 and 30% of the global 2000. And you can see they're in the top seven of the top 10 um, for the conglomerates, nine of the top 10 for household products, six of the top 10 for aerospace and defense, eight of the top 10 for chemicals. You can see down here, they're doing a lot of great things. So they've, they already have a lot of big customers and their NRR, they're 125%. So they're continuing to expand their footprint within these customers as well. New category leaders are born when mega shifts take place. So you think about data center and hardware, you got Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services, applications of data center, Salesforce, Workday, ServiceNow, all great companies. And I own all these stocks. On-premises security, Zscaler. And then focused innovation, you can see all the innovation they've done since 2007, continuously improving and growing more patents. You can see 100 patents filed here in 2017. And over here, 300th patent filed in 2022. I mentioned that earlier. So doing great things, lots of good information there. Um, phase transformational journey. I won't go into too much on this, but it talks about that zero trust for users. And then phase two, they can do the SaaS and workload posture, the branch network and advanced security and so on. 
you know, more of the same here, driving transformation from legacy on-prem to cloud. We've talked about this, that zero trust exchange with everything flowing into that, right? And flowing into that gateway. Traditional IT, everybody's working more remotely. So that old hub and spoke methodology doesn't work like it used to. So why hub and spoke network and castle and moat security create issues? They find you, they compromise you, they move laterally and they steal all your data. <laughs> so bad things, right? Zscaler is trans transforming security. You can see zero trust is needed to defend the cloud first enterprise. So eliminate the tax surface, stop that lateral movement, prevent compromise and stop data loss. You can see that zero trust does all of that, whereas firewalls and VPNs don't do the eliminate attack service to prevent lateral movements. And they're limited for prevent compromise as well as the data loss. So Zscaler also works for hybrid and multi-cloud environments. You can kind of see how that looks here. With your external apps and internal apps, you got that zero trust exchange in the middle, everything flowing in and out of Zscaler. So Zscaler zero trust platform offerings, everything in a nutshell here, you can kind of look through. So this is actually an interesting slide. So ecosystem of best of breed platforms, you can see one of my favorites down here for endpoint security, right? You, can see, you notice how they've got uh, that company listed and not the other one, right? So CrowdStrike's listed. For identity management, you can see one of the four horsemen that I no longer own, also Ping and SailPoint. Sail the cloud providers, Azure and AWS, you got your data center, your SaaS with the ServiceNows, the Salesforce, Microsoft 365. You got your old school branch routers with the Cisco's and the VMware's and then your security operations with ServiceNow, with Azure, with Splunk and so on. And you know, really Zscaler is that middle, that zero trust exchange, everything flowing in and out. Secular tailwinds powering adoption from internet, SaaS, Office 365, direct to cloud, work from anywhere, you know, infrastructure as a service, internet of things, 5G and so on. Here's their competitive advantages. So comprehensive and integrated platform at scale. It is very scalable. So depending on if you have, you know, 100, 100 users or 100 employees or 100,000, it's very scalable in that way. Software as a service, of course, right? Focused innovation and extensible platform, multi-tenant security cloud, growing data insights, artificial intelligence, and machine learning, it mentions here. Growing technology partner ecosystem, which is big, and then world-class go-to-market and growing channel. This is a powerful slide here. So Global Footprint delivers better security and user experience. 150 plus data centers, 240 billion plus transactions a day, 7 billion enforcements per day, 200,000 security updates per day. And you can see 100% renewable energy. You've got all these data centers all over the world. And you can see here the execution leader for 2022 Gartner MQ for security service edge. You can see Zscaler is one of the leaders up here. There's actually three leaders in this top right quadrant. Highest ability to execute in 11 consecutive years of Gartner leadership, largest and most proven security cloud for SWG and ZTNA, Zscaler Zero Trust Exchange accelerates secure digital transformation. You hear it over and over again. Enabling digital transformation requires unique sales process. So this is actually interesting too. So they got the land and expand. You hear that a lot with SaaS, right? And you can see top of funnel, lead gen, identity pain points, this big flywheel, driving value through lifecycle engagement with their customers, scaling with majors and large enterprises while expanding to smaller enterprises. So you can see they've got the majors, 40K plus employees, and it goes down to commercial, less than 2K employees. And they're expanding, expands TAM significantly, shorter sales cycles and so on. There's just a lot of information on here. Annual revenue, year over year growth, you can see. 56% um, here, uh, quarterly revenue year over year growth. You see that that slowly stepping up and improving. Strong year over year in calculated billings. You can see some mixed numbers in there, but annual billings quite strong. Annual pricing model provides significant expansion opportunities. So you can see they got the transformation bundle, the pro bundle. You can see the different price points on here. This is price per user and price per workload and the different products that they offer. Serviceable users of 335 million and serviceable workloads of 150 million. So this is talking about potential users and workloads. And um, there's a lot, there's a lot of total addressable market out there. And the, the, you know, as we go on, we use more data, more data, more information. The more that we get into 5G, the more that businesses go into the cloud, there's just more and more opportunity for these companies to continue to expand their total addressable market. Their serviceable market of 72 billion plus bigger long-term opportunities. You can see here their user, 
49 billion workload, 23 billion commercial segment, and so on. So a lot of opportunity. Upsell opportunity, they say is 6X. So there's a lot of opportunity there. Significant international revenue. Historically, approximately 50% of the revenue comes from outside of the Americas. You can see 52% Americas, Asia Pacific, 15%, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, 33%. And they also have a lot of global partners. Attractive gross margins. We'll talk about these gross margins here in a little bit. Investing for growth to capture large opportunity. You know, lots of great slides here. Let's break down some of these financials. First, I'm going to actually show you Fidelity, just kind of give you an overview. So, of course, this doesn't pay a dividend. This is a high flyer type stock. $22.37 billion market cap, trading right now at about $158. It was just quite a bit lower. In fact, it was down to $125.12 on May 18th. And you can see on the chart here, I look at a two-year chart. This thing got all the way up to $376 and pulled back to $125, like most of these growth names. Now, this is one of the most expensive stocks that you're going to find. And I'm going to break that down here and show you what that looks like on a slide. All right, let's get into the Z scalar numbers. Now, the EV NCM revenue is 16.2x. Now, that's much lower than it was at the highs, but that's still really expensive, guys. It's one of the top five most expensive stocks when you think of SaaS companies and probably even in the world. There's it, there's an elite handful that are very expensive kind of in this, this basket, and Zscaler is one of those. Now, the 2023 estimate is 13.2x. It's still really expensive, but it's less than 16.2. LTM revenue growth, 61%. Now, that's solid. Now, LTM equals last 12 months revenue growth, 61%. NTM is next 12 months revenue growth, 41%. That shows us that the growth is actually slowing down. Maybe they're being conservative, maybe they're not, but the growth is slowing down and you're still paying a pretty big premium on the, the stock. Now, before I go on, I know there's gonna be people that are gonna freak out because I'm saying anything negative and I'm supposed to just come on and pump stocks and that's not what I do. I give you the good, bad, and ugly and help you provide you data so you can make your own decisions whether or not the stock is a good fit for your portfolio or not. I own this stock, but I've owned this stock since 2019. I covered this stock on a video on this channel. Subscribe to this channel if you're not subscribed. Click that bell to get notifications. We covered this and I said it was a top stock to hold for the next five years. And it's done very, very well since we bought it in 20, 2019. Now, of course, you bought it, if you bought it in 2021 at the top, like a lot of these stocks, well, you've gotten crushed, okay? So I, I wasn't ever really buying any of these SaaS stocks at their highs. Most of them I was buying back in 2019. Gross margin, 77%. Operating margin, that's a negative 31%. Free cash flow margin, this is a positive. This is 29%. Rule of 40, very good, 90%. But can they keep that pace? Net expansion, we talked about 125%. Now, SBC to revenue, okay? So what this is, this is stock-based compensation, SBC, 38.63%. That's pretty high. It's one of the top three highest, actually. Now, this is free cash flow minus stock-based compensation revenue. That's a negative 17.86%. So what is this telling you? It's telling you that the executives are getting very wealthy, they're being paid with stock-based compensation. There's several stocks that are in the SaaS, all the SaaS companies and a lot of the tech companies are really in this bucket, but some are more expensive or they, they pay out more stock-based compensation than others. This is one of the top, top ones. You got Snowflake is way higher than this. And then you've got Zscaler and a few others that are kind of in this range. Now the SBC is stock-based compensation to market cap is 1.69%. So when I look at this and I look at where it's trading at, the possibilities for future growth, I will say that it's expensive. I think that this stock, when it gets close to $100, is a much better price. And the narrative has changed with these growth stocks, these hyper growth stories. People will not just pay for growth at any price. They want to have, you know, there's certain metrics that, that you want to look at. Now, this is certainly one of the better stocks, and I've actually been trying to add to my position, actually dollar cost averaging up. But where it's at now, uh, over $150, I would probably be a little bit patient at this point and maybe wait for a better entry. I'm going to show you a quick chart here of Zscaler. Now, before I do that, I need to mention that Motley Fool sponsored this video. And you can go to fool.com backslash fired up wealth to see the top 10 
stocks to buy now. Go check it out. Also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already and click that bell to get notifications. And if this is helpful, drop me a like and drop me a comment. So let's look at Zscaler here. This thing started trading back all the way back here in 2018. I bought it in 2019, somewhere back here in the 50s or 60s, I believe. And I did, I have been adding, I've been dollar cost averaging up. You can see that this actually followed this March low trend line back here, $35, kind of bottomed out around 125. And you can see the top on it was $376 back in November of 2021, like most things. A lot of these growth stocks bottomed right before Thanksgiving, uh, U.S. Thanksgiving in, in 2021 in November. Now you can see that this has is, is formed a nice floor, had earnings. The earnings were pretty solid. It's popped. I think it's actually possible if the market continues to stay bullish that this could see a short-term rebound up to $190. It doesn't mean it has to. And I said earlier that I'd probably wait for a better entry price it doesn't mean you, you're going to get it. You know, if you can get it at 125 or less, that would be a great opportunity, but there's no guarantee. Now, the bears are going to tell you that this thing's going to go to $76. I'll tell you this right now. If this thing goes $100 or less, I will be adding a lot more shares of this company. But part of my job is to give you the good, bad, and ugly and let you decide what's best for your portfolio. I don't think most people that buy SaaS companies really understand what they do. I don't think they understand the risks or how expensive they are or how stock-based compensation works. I used to work in SaaS. I worked in software. I understand what these companies do. I understand how the business operates. I understand why stock-based compensation is important. But if you don't understand those things, it's easy to sit outside and look in and say, that's bad, that's bad, don't buy that. I'm a perma, I'm a perma bear. I think that these companies have great potential long term, but they do carry risks with anything that there's going to be reward. There's always going to be risk. So I'm bullish Zscaler. You need, me, you need to hear me say that. I actually don't even think it's a terrible price at $150, but most people wouldn't agree. And people that don't understand SaaS are going to say, you know, don't touch this unless it's $75. OK, so you got to do what's best for you. Make sure you understand what you're buying. Most people, if they don't understand SaaS or how these valuations work or what EVNTM revenue even means, you probably should be buying this in your spec bucket or maybe not at all. But this is a breakdown of Zscaler to help you understand the company better. If it's helpful, make sure to drop me a like, drop me a comment. I appreciate your time and attention. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.